Hello everyone. Before I get started, I'd like to give a shout out to two of my members. Thank you for becoming a member, Zeynep Tunalı and Murali Sirinivasan. You can easily become a member and support the channel by clicking the join button. Members are given shout outs in my videos. All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have x to the power 1 over square root of x equals 2. I know some of you are already guessing the answer at this point, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at this equation from different angles. It still contains, my solution still contains, my solution still contains guess and check, but we're going to analyze this function a little more. So let's start by aligning both sides. All right, so I'm going to ln both sides. That's going to give me ln x to the power 1 over square root of x equals ln 2. Okay, great. With logs, you know, any base doesn't matter. We can go ahead and move this to the front because that's just going to become a coefficient, right? By using rules of uh, logs, we can do this. So let's go ahead and write it that way. We have 1 over square root of x times ln x equals ln 2. So far, so good. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We have a product, but one of them is kind of like a reciprocal. So we're going to write it as a quotient and write this as ln x over square root of x equals ln 2. You know, uh, Quite a few things can be done at this point. You can put the lns on the same side. You can use change of base, so on and so forth. But that's not my goal. I want to get something like this. I want to get an equation where I have f of a equals f of b. And then from here, I'm going to conclude that a equals b. Make sense? Okay. Let's see how this works. First of all, notice that if I write the right-hand side, as a quotient, so kind of copy what's on the left-hand side, I can write this as ln 2 over 1, right? So my thinking is, hey, wouldn't that be nice if x was 2 and square root of x was 1? But that, that can happen at the same time, right? If x is 2, square root of x does not equal 1, and vice versa. So this is not going to work. How can I make it work? Well, if you think about the numbers, like you can manipulate this, like multiply the top and the bottom by 2, and this is a trick that we use very often. And now I get 2 ln 2 over 2. So what, what is so good about it? Well, at least the bottom is no longer 1. And this one can be moved to make an exponent. So we can write this as ln 2 squared over 2, which is ln 4 over 2. Now let me rewrite it for you. ln x over square root of x equals ln 4 over 2. Awesome. Why is it awesome? Because it works. Look at this. If x is 4, square root of x is 2. And yay, we got a solution. I'm not saying these are all the solutions, but at least we got one solution. So that's good. All right, so x equals 4 works. But how can you tell if there is any other solutions or not, right? So we're going to go ahead and explore another solution. And we're going to analyze this a little bit from a calculus perspective. We're going to take the first derivative, so on and so forth. And also take a look at the graph at the end. So what is the other solution and where does that come from? So we're going to, since our approach worked, now why not repeat the same process? There's no guarantee, but, you know, it might just work. So let's go ahead and try that. I know that this is ln 4 over 2. Why don't we just multiply the top? And I could probably just do this. Multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And that's going to give me... 2 ln 4, and again, I can just skip a step here and write this as ln 4 squared, which is ln 16, divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, if you compare these two, ln x and ln 16, and square root of x and 4, you're going to notice something interesting. It works again, right? If x is equal to 16, square root of x is equal to 4, so x equals 16 is just another solution. So why don't we just keep repeating the process and hopefully get infinitely many solutions. But things, things aren't always going to be that nice, but let's still give it a try. So let's see how this works. I got ln 16 over 4, and now I, I, I want to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And this is going to give me ln 
16 squared, which is ln 256, and 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Unfortunately, our solution fails at this point, or method, I shouldn't say solution, because if x is 256, square root of x does not equal 8, so we're actually done. There's only two solutions. I'm going to show you the graph, but first of all, let's go ahead and analyze this function from a calculus perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and differentiate it. So why not ln both sides first? I'm going to ln both sides and then write the right hand side as 1 over square root of x times ln x, but I can write as ln x over square root of x. We've seen that before, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to x. When we do that, we have to use the chain rule, ln u over, not ln u over, Okay, it's just ln u. How do you differentiate ln u? And the rule says, chain rule says, if u is a function of x and you're trying to differentiate with respect to x, then this becomes u prime over u. So that's the chain rule. So this is going to become f prime over f. And now on the right hand side, we have the derivative of a quotient, which is the derivative of the numerator, 1 over x times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 1 over 2 square root of x, times the numerator. And all of that is divided by the denominator squared. Easy, right? That kind of looks complicated, but it is kind of easy, if you know the rules. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by f of x, and then simplify the top a little bit. 1 over x times square root of x can be written as 1 over x, 1 over square root of x, and this one can be written as ln x over 2 square root of x, and all of that is going to be divided by x because square root of x squared is x. Okay, great. All right, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply this by 2 to make a common denominator, and this replace this with x to the power 1 over square root of x. That was f of x, remember? So the derivative of f is going to be x to the power 1 over square root of x times 2 minus ln x over 2 square root of x, but that's going to be multiplied by x when flipped and multiplied. So the denominator is going to become at the end 2x square root of x. And guess what? We're going to set this equal to 0 because I want to find the critical value. x to the power 1 over square root of x can never be 0. You'll see it in the graph. So this is the only thing that can be 0. If 2 minus ln x is 0, ln x is 2, and by definition, x equals e squared which is, I don't know, 8 point something, I, I guess. And we know it's greater than 7.29 because it's 2.7 squared. Anyways, so I have a, a x, but what is f of x at this point or f of e squared? Remember, our function is x to the power of 1 over square root of x. So if you replace x with e squared, you're going to get e squared to the power of 1 over e. That is e to the power 2 over e. So don't forget those two values because they're going to come up on the graph. But the graph tells you what? Okay, so here's the thing. So I gave you basically the graph of f of x equals x to the power 1 over square root of x. And you do see a couple things here. First of all, this is where the graph has a maximum. I didn't go into the details. Hopefully you can work it out. And we got two more points. And those are the actually the intersection points with the horizontal line y equals 2. We have a solution at x equals 4 and x equals 16. And this is a kind of like a curve that is concave down. And there's only two solutions. So the solution set is 4 and 16. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.